This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Also, make sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube original channel, UCTV Prime, available only on YouTube. Uh, the issue is, can we har harness the patient's own immune system to regulate itself in a way that we can decrease the need for immunosuppressive drugs? And that the excitement uh, that follows uh, the uh, you know recent research over the past you know 10 to 15 years on the role of T-Rex cells in autoimmunity, and now increasingly in transplantation, UCSF is getting to be a major uh, uh, center for T-Rex intervention, autoimmunity, and hopefully in transplantation. And Sang Mo Kang will review uh, some of the plans, the need, the the potential for T-Rex intervention in transplantation, and some of the studies that we plan to do at UCSF. Great. Pointer. All right, well, thanks, Flavio. Um, I realized when I was asked to give this talk that we had, I had given a talk two years earlier, but actually there's plenty of stuff to, to discuss because we've uh, moved uh, uh, quite a bit uh, since then, and we actually have clinical trials ready to go in uh, using T-regulatory uh, cells. So I just want to update you on uh, some of the relevant points. I'm going to skip through some of the hardcore science because we're running out of time and I'm standing between you and a glass of Cabernet. So this is the reality of what we're dealing with. We've talked about the fact that our, our outcomes haven't really improved over the past you know, 15, 20 years. And the reason is we're still talking about immunosuppression in the, in the standard sense. And this is the, the reality of it. This is what we're, our patients take uh, every, every day. So until we really change that paradigm, we're really going to be kind of stuck, maybe working on the margins, trying to improve things just a little bit at a time. So I'm going to talk to you today about uh, regulatory T cells, give you a little bit of an uh, overview of their biology, just so get everybody up to speed, and then talk about how we were thinking of using uh, regulatory T cells to, to, to uh, uh, improve outcomes in transplantation. So we'll, we'll talk about why the immune system needs Tregs in the first place, what Tregs are, what they look like and how they function, um, evidence that Tregs are involved in transplantation tolerance, uh, challenges that we have for clinically translating these findings to, to, to patients, and then upcoming trials. So why do we care about T cells in the first place, right? Well. Um, I think most, if not all of you know, that T cells are critical uh, for the development of rejection uh, to an uh, uh, allograft. So if you, if you do a transplant into an animal with no T cells, they never reject a, a, a graft. You don't have to give them any medications, right? So these cells are really critical. CD8 cells turn into killer cells that actually damages uh, tissue. The CD4 cells turn into helper cells that can also uh, damage tissue and also help make alloantibodies, which are, again, very important for transplant outcomes. So these are really the key uh, components of the immune response. Not the only components, but, but really key in, in uh, developing rejection. And if you think about self-tolerance, well, you have all these T cells, how come you're not attacking yourself? Of course, some of our patients do have autoimmunity. If you go back to medical school and think about the ontogeny of T cells, you have T cell precursors coming into the thymus, they eventually develop. The cells that are really strongly autoreactive get killed off, and then the ones that are slightly self-reactive survive. So that's, that's sort of the, the modern theory of uh, T cell development. Now, to have true tolerance, you'd, you'd have to say, well, every single antigen in your body has to be presented in the, in the thymus. And 
if you think about it, there's really that would be really a uh, hard thing to do. Although most antigens are presented in the thymus, it's certainly uh, not all. So you really have this threat of rogue autoimmune T cells that are still running around. It's pretty easy to demonstrate autoimmune T cells in, in, in normal human uh, subjects. So, um, so the important points are that elimination of autoreactive T cells in the thymus is not perfect. T cell activation in response to foreign antigens can lead to activation of these autoimmune cells. <laughs> and um, another uh, maybe more subtle mechanisms of deletion and energy in mature cells is also not perfect. So nature is pretty smart and has come up with sort of the policemen or, or the peacekeepers of the immune system, which are these so-called regulatory T cells or T regs. You'll be hearing a lot more about them uh, over the course of the next five to ten years. They compromise, uh, comprise about one to two percent of all uh, peripheral mononuclear uh, cells. They're typically CD25 positive and CD127 low. And we know they're important because Treg deficiency from mutations of, of one of the uh, transcriptional regulators of Tregs, FOXP3, leads to autoimmune disease. And I'm not going to belabor this, but FOXP3 is the master transcriptional regulator that makes a Treg a, a Treg, or at least the natural, so-called natural Tregs. And that's, you'll see this bandied about quite a bit. They express CD25 and CD62L. Tregs also come from the thymus, and the mo most important thing to understand is that these, these re regulatory T cells can also influence regular T cells and, and help turn them into uh, regulators themselves. And so it is a, it's, it's sort of underlying the concept of infectious tolerance, which is something that's been observed for decades in, in experimental transplantation. And so th this potentially could be a, a way of sort of amplifying the effects of the, the regulatory T cells that we, we give. How do these cells actually work? Well, it turns out they're, they're T cells. They actually do uh, engage uh, MHC class two with a peptide. So they, they respond in very much the same way as an effector uh, T cell or a conventional T cell. And they actually do need cell-cell contact between the, the, cell, the effector cell and the regulatory T cell to inhibit that effector T cell. So they do secrete cytokines, but they actually do need, you know, cell-cell contact. And the, the most important thing to understand, really, is that regulatory T cells uh, not only affect other T cells that are activated, for example, the Th2 cells that may uh, help uh, the B cells make alloantibodies, but they also affect the, the neutrophils and the NK cells, the whole innate system is also impacted by regulatory T cells, and it can actually impact dendritic cells, which are the, the antigen-presenting cells of the immune system, and so turn them into what we call regulatory dendritic cells. So there's really, they're really sort of like the Swiss army knife of the immune system and sort of tuning the immune system down. So now that we know about Tregs, um, I think we have to change the paradigm of how we think about how immune responses are initiated and, and then turned off. So in the steady state, you have this balance between Tregs and T effector T cells. When you get an infection, you obviously don't want the Tregs to suppress that. What happens is that your effector cells proliferate very quickly. The Tregs are also proliferating in the background. Once the infection is over, then the balance shifts. The Tregs have expanded. Here, here's some inducible uh, Tregs. And then the number of effector cells has gone down because there's a natural process of, of apoptosis that happens. So, but it's very clear that you need this expansion of Tregs to, to turn off the immune system. So it gives us an idea, of, well, maybe we can use Tregs to alter the balance uh, so that our T cells won't respond to the transplant. So you can imagine, here's your steady state again, Tregs and T effectors. And now we're going to give, increase the number of Tregs so that we can alter this balance. And maybe after the transplant, we'll, we'll have tolerance instead of rejection. So that's sort of the simple concept. Well, what are, are these Tregs truly important? Well, if you, uh, and I'll show you some data on this because it's a really cool experiment. If you deplete Tregs, if I depleted 
Tregs at any of you, you'd, you'd all probably succumb from autoimmune disease within a couple of weeks. So it's, it's really uh, important. The other uh, uh, clues uh, to whether uh, they might be effective is that if you look at, uh, if you look at tolerant patients, uh, whether they be pregnant mothers who are tolerant of their, of their fetus, uh, there's increased Treg activity. Transplant patients who have tolerance or, or uh, uh, graft acceptance also have increased uh, Treg activity. And then uh, experimental uh, evidence has shown that Treg administration can be effective, and we'll go over some of that data. Well, this is a really cool experiment. Uh, I don't want to get into the details because of time, but basically it's a mouse experiment where you, they've set it up so that you can delete the, only the Treg. So, all the other T cells are intact, the entire animal is intact except for the T regs, and you can determine when you want to get rid of them. So if you do that in an adult mouse, so here's the, the mouse, it, all the mice are surviving, you, you get rid of the T regs and see, ask when they die, well within about two weeks every single animal is dead, and they're all dead from autoimmunity, this is what their lymph nodes look like in their spleen, it's, it's gigantic, so very, very important. and. and and really a fundamental uh, cell in, in the immune system. Chi uh, Tong, who's our, the PhD immunologist in our lab, who's really been sort of the focal point uh, of the uh, Treg biology and manufacturing uh, in our, our division, along with Jeff Bluestone, um, uh, did this experiment in 2005 when she was, uh, or published this in 2005 when she was working with Dr. Bluestone. She showed that if you actually administer uh, regulatory T cells that are islet specific, that you could actually prevent the development of diabetes. So this is blood glucose and age, but these are untreated animals and animals treated with islet specific Tregs. So you could actually prevent spontaneous diabetes uh, in these animals. And then if you actually took animals that had early onset diabetes and gave them uh, Tregs after, you can actually get remission in over half the, 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 the mice. So really encouraging results, and, and this actually has led to uh, the initiation of a trial in, in uh, new onset diabetics. So very exciting data, and, and really helps spur on the idea that we could use them in transplantation. I should note, uh, uh, we're going to skip over a little bit, but that there is some clinical data in renal transplantation. So. Uh, Dr. Stock, uh, uh, as well as the rest of the transplant group at UCSF, has shown that increased FOXP3 levels in pediatric kidney transplants pre-transplant has some correlation with the uh, incidence of rejection post-transplant. So the kids who had higher levels of Tregs going in had less rejection. So it, it's a correlate. And then uh, from Suthan's group in New York, they showed that Fox increased levels of FOXP3, which again is related to the Tregs, was associated with uh, uh, the reversibility of rejection uh, on kidney biopsies. This is what it look, uh, what these cells look like on a fax profile or flow uh, cytometry profile. This is CD25 staining CD4. So these are generally CD4 high. And we use another marker, CD62, which I uh, mentioned earlier. You can, you can sort these cells. And then <clears throat> when you uh, analyze them for FOXP3, which is an intracellular uh, marker, so you can't really use them for sorting. But when we analyze them, they're almost all FOXP3 positive. So these are regulatory T cells. So in summary, uh, for part one, Treg are a naturally occurring subset of uh, T cells characterized by CD4, CD25, and FOXP3 expression. You guys will see those markers more than any other. Uh, Tregs are vital in pre uh, preventing autoimmunity and are, uh, appear to be involved in transplantation tolerance. So that begs the question, can Treg be used therapeutically to change outcomes? So we'll talk a little bit about Treg therapy in mouse models. Uh, very briefly, we'll talk about the manufacturing and our clinical trial plans. So uh, Todd Brennan in, in my laboratory uh, showed that if you used Tregs in a mouse model of heart transplant alone without any other treatment, you could extend survival from about 10 days to about 20 days. So it's not that impressive, but it, it's a, it's a, as a monotherapy, it's not horrible, but certainly it's not enough by itself. All right? So that's one conclusion. 
So we came up with an idea that we have to deplete uh, the uh, T effector cells that are alloreactive uh, because remember that that's sort of the balance between the T regs and T effectors is sort of how we conceptualize uh, uh, which ones will win out. And so our idea was to, to, to deplete uh, uh, donor reactive T cells uh, pre-transplant and then give the, uh, the T regs. And if we did that, we could show that in, in an islet transplant model, instead of rejecting at say 15 days, that about 70% of the animals will go indefinitely. So, you know, the strategy seems to be uh, uh, to bear out uh, the the concept of this uh, balance. So, what about uh, Treg uh, manufacturing? Um, well, there's there's several issues. One is, well, if you if you think about it, we have to get blood from the from the recipient, get enough T regs, and then infuse them back into the patient. Well, uh, it turns out that if you took out all the T regs in the circulation, it would, you'd end up with about a hundred million T regs, and that's not nearly enough to really alter the balance because in your entire body you probably have about ten uh, uh, billion. T reg, so it's you know adding a hundred million would be like you know uh, not a whole a whole lot of uh, uh, change in, in the overall numbers. So we really think we have to expand these regulatory T cells, not just take them out and infuse them back in. So that's point number one. The other is should we use donor specific T regs? So should we take the T regs that are specifically reactive to the donor cells, or should we just take any old T regs, you know, poly, what we call polyclonal or unselected T regs, grow them up and infuse them. And, and the advantage of that is that it's a lot easier um, uh, to do the latter. So uh, here's something that may affect uh, uh, your thinking on which ones to use in that, so if you look at the potency of suppression of an alloimmune response in vitro, the, uh, the cells that are polyclonal versus the donor specific are less potent at uh, suppressing T cell responses uh, to that donor. So the donor specific T regs are more effective at uh, suppressing uh, uh, T cell responses at, at lower ratios. These are actually, this is actually a lower ratio to the right. So donor specific T regs are more potent. That doesn't mean that polyclonal T regs don't have any potency, but that is a consideration. So one of the questions is, well, can you use polyclonal Tregs at all? And so we use the same model uh, that we used earlier, and we could show that if we use what we call polyclonal Tregs in that same protocol where we had most, you know, the majority of the islets going long term, it doesn't work quite as well. But if we just increase the number, we can get good long term survival. So, so it, that makes sense. We just have to use more. Uh, T regs if we use a polyclonal versus a donor specific. So here are the, sort of the pros and cons of, of, of each approach because we're, we're actually going to use both approaches in our trials. Uh, the pro for polyclonal is that the manufacturing process is already established, it's FDA approved. We're actually, we've already infused uh, several type 1 diabetes patients uh, with polyclonal T regs. Uh, so we have FDA approval and an I open IND. The problem with polyclonals are A, less efficacious as I, I showed you earlier, and you, you always have the concern of nonspecific immunosuppression, really. I mean, if you have nonspecific cells, maybe you're going to get nonspecific suppression. So that is a concern. The uh, advantages of donor reactive is that, again, in almost every study, they're more effective than polyclonal uh, at preventing rejection. Uh, and we also have more specific immune regulation because it's really targeted to that specific tissue and it's much less likely to lead to uh, nonspecific immunosuppression. But there's really no established protocol for this large-scale expansion. That's where uh, Tong has really been instrumental. So she uh, came up uh, along with Jeff Bluestone uh, with this uh, approach, basically using donor cells to stimulate the, the polyclonal Tregs and growing up the, only the ones that are reacting to donor cells. I'm, I'm not going to get into the details here. She was able to show that 
we could get a thousand fold expansion of these donor reactive Tregs in vitro. Um, so, and that level of expansion gives us plenty of Tregs for, for the numbers that we think will be needed uh, to actually alter immunologic outcomes in a, in a human. <coughs> Uh, there are obviously uh, safety issues that need to be addressed, and uh, I don't want to get into it too much, but we, we are looking at even at the, the, uh, at the level of the DNA to make sure that these are Tregs, and in fact, uh, really the, the most strongest or the most reliable marker of Tregs, which is this demethylation of the promoter, more than 95% are demethylated. So we, we really think we have a, a good process here, and these cells are highly suppressive in vitro. So um, we have uh, four studies currently uh, uh, pending. One in adult living donor kidney patients is called the ONE study. Uh, this is actually a multi-center trial uh, based out of Europe. Uh, we're uh, the only US center. We were uh, asked to participate because of our uh, expertise in Treg manufacturing. And these other groups in Europe are going to be using different types of regulatory cells, some Tregs, but others uh, mesenchymal stem cells, et cetera. So it's going to be a multicenter trial trying out different types of cellular therapy. But the idea here is that we would, uh, everybody's using the same protocol. It's a phase one trial. Uh, there's a solumedrol uh, or prednisone that ends at 15 weeks. Cellcept uh, goes on for 12 months. We give the, uh, we, each center decides when they give the cells. We're probably going to give it around the time of transplant, although we haven't fully uh, worked that out yet. And then it's a prograph-based uh, immunosuppression. And there's some uh, biopsies uh, at various time points and all the immune monitoring assays that you can, you can uh, 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 that'll be centralized and give us a lot of mechanistic information. So, and this is a trial that's going to start probably in the next uh, year or so. And then uh, Flavio uh, has a trial uh, that is already funded by CTOT. Um, basically, you, you heard about the six-month surveillance uh, biopsies. There are some patients with nonspecific, nonspecific inflammation that we're going to uh, grow polyclonal Tregs from and infuse and see if we make an impact on either the biopsy or other immunologic markers. So that'll be a really exciting uh, trial as well. We do uh, have some liver trials uh, 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 in the planning stages. One is a, a adult uh, liver transplant trial, but basically we're going to give uh, donor-specific Tregs to liver transplant patients. The, uh, we, we've designed this study from, from the ground up, and so we, we really uh, believe in the concept of T-cell depletion, so we're going to be giving uh, thymoglobulin to these patients. We're also using serolimus because there's some evidence that serolimus favors Tregs uh, more so than other types of immunosuppressive drugs. So that's another concept that you may be hearing about in the future. Uh, Sandy uh, has a uh, pediatric uh, liver uh, transplant trial. She's been doing uh, pediatric immunosuppression withdrawal uh, uh, in long-term uh, liver transplant patients. So, uh, many patients are tolerant, but some are not. And those patients who are not tolerant, she's proposing to uh, administer Tregs and see if we can then reassess uh, uh, markers of tolerance and see whether they can actually be now withdrawn from, from immunosuppression. And these are likely to be, you know, first-in-man applications of Tregs uh, for transplant patients. So really exciting. The, the other thing that I, I mentioned earlier is that, you know, we always thought of inhibiting T effector responses, but we never really thought about enhancing T, suppre T suppressor or T regulatory functions. And so now that we know about regulatory C cells, maybe we should include that in our paradigm of, of immunosuppression. And we, we do know that certain drugs like serolimus, and thymoglobulin tend to favor uh, the development of Tregs. So patients who, are, who have been treated this way tend to have higher levels of Tregs than, than patients who are, for example, on Prograf or cyclosporin. Bilatacept is kind of an unknown, but it, it doesn't seem to decrease the amount of Tregs. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, steroids may help 
uh, induce Tregs in some instances as well. Um, and we obviously need additional studies to understand how immunosuppressants and immunomodulatory agents affect Treg numbers and, and donor-specific activity as well. And, and you know, many, many groups are working on that uh, today. So in conclusion, Tregs are a recently discovered subset of T cells that have altered our paradigms for thinking about immunity and tolerance. The discovery of Tregs allows us to think about novel approaches to immunosuppression and or tolerance. I think we've shown that manufacturing uh, uh, these Tregs, uh, clinical grade Tregs, is feasible, and so trials are coming soon. Thanks.